roads in need of repair, the state of our parks, our property taxes, all in the balance this election season. Candidates for the Pima County Board of Supervisors tell us what they would do if elected. We meet the Republican primary contestants in two races. This is Metro Week. Today, we'll hear from the candidates in the Republican primaries for two seats on the Pima County Board of Supervisors. First, a recap of the week's top stories. Arizona senators are asking the federal government to investigate whether a cross-border drainage tunnel beneath the Nogales Port of Entry could cave in. The General Services Administration plans to investigate the drainage tunnel, which Senators John McCain and Jeff Flake say has not been inspected in years and is in danger of collapse. Arizona has been assured that it will not lose access to any water it stores in Lake Mead. The state has been keeping its unused Colorado River allocation in the lake with the goal of avoiding a drought declaration. If lake levels drop too low, Arizona stands to lose 40 percent of its allocation. The U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has endorsed a presidential candidate for the first time. The group is backing presumptive Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. The head of the local Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Leah Marquez Peterson, says while her group has no plans of giving an endorsement, she understands why the national organization would pick Clinton rather than Republican candidate Donald Trump because of his inflammatory remarks about Mexicans. And Arizona's unemployment rate went up two-tenths of a percentage point in June and now sits at 5.8 percent. State officials say the uptick is common this time of year as schools let out for summer break and staff stop working. For more, visit our website. There's no doubt it's election season. Every major intersection in town has signs of it, literally. We'll cover the Pima County part of the ballot for the next few weeks, starting today with Pima County Board of Supervisors primaries. The supervisors serve four-year terms, all five supervisors elected at the same time. I've worked for Pima County since 2006. They run the county government, which includes roads and infrastructure in unincorporated areas. The board also runs the metro area's sewer system and wastewater treatment. The big issues in Pima County politics start with taxpayer money. What should the budget be? How much money should be spent on parks or public safety? Upgrades to community centers or public health initiatives? Everyone seems to agree on the need to fix the county's roads. But there's no consensus on how to pay for the repairs. The state has taken a lot of the county's road money for other purposes, leaving Pima officials to find other sources or go without the repairs. These are the issues the candidates in the Republican primary races in Districts 1 and 4 face on the campaign trail. District 4 includes the south and east sides of Pima County, including parts of eastern Tucson, Green Valley, and the Vale area, plus Mount Lemon. The three Republicans seeking the party nomination are John Backer, Steve Christie, and Marla Clausen. Mr. Backer is an Air Force veteran who moved to Tucson when he served at Davis Monthan Air Force Base. He lives in Sahuarita and works for IBM, helping government agencies find and prevent financial fraud. Steve Christie is a former car dealership owner and has served on transportation and economic development boards in the Tucson area. Ms. Clausen has been running since 2015. She intended to challenge Republican Supervisor Ray Carroll until he announced he would not seek re-election. She's an engineer, small business owner, Navy intelligence chief, and Iraq War veteran. All three candidates joined me for an interview last week. So I'd like to start by asking each of you to compare yourselves or contrast from one of the Republican county supervisors in the last decade. So we've had Ann Day in District 1, obviously Ray Carroll in District 4, who you're all running to replace, and Allie Miller also in District 1 now. We'll start with you, Marla. Okay, well that's an interesting question. Um, I would have to say nobody. I chose to run against Ray Carroll last May because I, he didn't represent my fiscal conservative values. And uh, he raised taxes and supported the bonds, et cetera, et cetera. So that was one of the reasons I chose to rant. So there's not much of a comparison there. Um, and Ellie Miller, um, I'm not going to pick people. I'm my own person. I expect to bring my own qualities to the board. Um, I'm an engineer. I'm a former construction management business owner, combat veteran, military leader. And I expect to get along with everyone that's on the board and work forward to improve our county. Right, and you, John, same question. Compare or contrast? 
Uh, I would probably say um, Allie Miller, and I say that uh, because <clears throat> someone else actually used that comparison uh, because we were both you know, average citizens that stepped forward to, to serve our communities um, and you know, without a whole lot of, of ties to the establishment or, or those already in power. When I started running, I didn't know anybody who was serving currently. I didn't know a lot of people even in the Republican Party uh, the precinct chairs and so forth, uh, but I've been a lifelong Republican. And um, to to throw in one other thing, to, to contrast to, to Ray Carroll, uh, I've heard that he's been more about residents and less about business owners. And I think you should be able to listen to everyone. It doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. And Steve? Well, before I, I answer that question, I just want to acknowledge, as is my custom, uh, the military uh, service that both my opponents gave to this country and to express my appreciation and all of our appreciation for your service to our country, and I do appreciate that. Uh, to answer the question directly, uh, I, would, I would have to say that I don't think I, I in any way, sense, or, or shape of the, of the word uh, uh, compared or, or contrasted with any of the uh, past candidates. Um, when I served on the State Transportation Board, I was my own man there. I had no no individual that I copied or emulated. Same with the Regional Transportation Authority when I served on that and shared that. Um, I was uh, in a position where I had to provide my own style of leadership and my own background and my own capabilities. I never had anybody that I looked to or looked for as a role model or mentor or somebody to pursue in, in a manner. So uh, all of the other uh, supervisors that preceded me, uh, they were their own people. They had their own personality traits and and uh, uh, approaches to things. Mine, I believe, is, uh, is going to be unique and different and my own. All right, so let's move on to a conversation about the county budget, and we'll start with you on this one, John. Um, historically, the Republican Party has sought to push for lower taxes in Pima County, uh, presuming that's what you all want, and correct that presumption if I'm wrong. What specifically would you do to bring down the tax rate in the Pima County? Well, we, we have to um, set proper budget priorities. You know, we're, we're going out and spending money that the average citizen doesn't want us to spend. Or we're having bond issues and not using the money for what we were said we were going to use it for. So to, to specifically answer the question, we need to avoid situations where we're going out and paying more for a piece of property that the county's buying than what it appraises for. Um, we, we need to um, take care of just the things that everybody uh, largely agrees on that we need to do. What are those things? Well, we need to have roads that are repaired. Uh, we need to have infrastructure. Our sheriff's deputies need to be uh, granted the step increases, and I know in the most recent budget meeting that was discussed. So hopefully we're getting some movement there. Um, you know, the infrastructure types of things. Um, we need to uh, become more business friendly to, to bring those businesses to the county and uh, make working with a county far easier. But you know, back to the, the budget question, um, you know, those are the types of things that our citizens want. When, when I was walking neighborhoods and knocking on doors, the roads came up probably 75 or 80% of the time. And the roads not only are something that impacts the citizens on a daily basis, it also is a frequently given reason why businesses don't want to come here. The curb appeal just isn't where it needs to be. I believe that the way to reduce uh, uh, taxes and, and to get the budget under control is in the, in the area of economic development, and I feel most passionate about that. I believe that the, the door that opens up business development in our community, and basically right in the backyard of District 14, is the Sonoran Corridor. In uh, District 4. Did I say 14? You said 14. I beg your pardon. <laughs> District 4, thank you. Um, and that uh, it's right in District 4's background, and it's a nexus, an, a, a, an incubation plant really of bringing and attracting high-tech industry. After all, we have the confluence of I-10 and I-19 meeting there. We have the Tucson International Airport. We have Raytheon. We have Union Pacific. We have the Port of Tucson. We have the U of A Arizona Tech Park. That is an area that I, will, I am passionate about because I believe it will attract and grow industry, which will bring in more revenue, which will bring in more taxes, which will give us the ability to look in, in a much more business-like manner at our, at our budget and get back to our priorities, but we can't look at uh, reducing costs if we don't have an, an available uh, 
revenue stream, and I believe that that revenue stream can be provided by what I am most passionate about, and that is business development through the Sonoran Corridor. And what specifically would you do to lower the property tax rate? I have been attending the Board of Supervisors meetings for almost a year and a half now, since we just discussed I've been running for a year. And I think, I believe there's three straightforward solutions to that, and the taxes are an integral part of it. I've been observing a lot of waste and irresponsible and special interest spending at the Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll ask you for some examples. I, I would I would simply vote no to that wasteful spending and prioritize that money on our core county services. So we have to, you can't build a house with starting with the roof, you gotta start with the foundation first. So that would move us on to number two, which would be lower our taxes and debt. And how do we do that? We work with our streamlined budget and our cut line by line budget to provide our services. Then the need for increasing our taxes or the need to sell bonds to provide our services will diminish or go away. Once we get our, our our county on a lower tax environment and a better debt situation, it's crucial to attract business. I own my own business. I know what it takes to attract business to the county. And the third one is to be enact the pro-business policies, which means visiting with development services. I visited with um, Pima County Development Services, um, the head of that, and kicked around some ideas. I've been going door to door, finding out um, people's cause, um, problems and what their take on the deal is and uh, development people and we need to streamline county services and that will attract business and it will increase our tax base so we don't have to beat up on the little guy for taxes. And you referenced wasteful spending. Can you give an example of one of the wasteful spendings um, you've seen? Let's see. One example would be uh, we have a lobbyist that we pay that lobbies the state to, uh, to put a tax increase on us. That's one example. Um, I saw a TRIO, um, it's a uh, non, non, it's an economic development consultation firm, and they, the uh, chairman of that makes over $300,000 a year. And we just gave them a 300 and some thousand dollars a raise to improve economic, an economic uh, development in our county. And I should just note that all of the regional governments, all the governments in the region contribute to TRIO. It's not a Pima County entity. Correct. But Pima County is one of them. That's that correct. But you just it. asked me off the yeah. top of my head. Those are the ones I was yeah, thinking Yeah, but just of. so in case right. people don't know what that is. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. Yes, thank you. So I want to move on to bonding and debt. You, all of your, whoever's elected, um, the, your predecessor, Ray Carroll, was against, um, against increasing the debt of the Pima County. Um, at least in many of the years that he was in office. So uh, let's presume, well, actually, first tell me whether you're for or against continued bonding. And then I want to specifically turn to how to fund roads either way, uh, with or without bonding. We'll start with you on this one. There, the whole bond process, I, I believe, was uh, poorly presented. It was confusing. It was a mishmash of, of different uh, uh, projects that nobody seemed to be able to, to navigate their way through. I did support one bond issue, and it was because of my passion for economic development, and it was that one bond issue that dealt with the Sonoran Corridor, uh, because I believe so deeply in its economic development uh, prospects. But nonetheless, even at that one level, I had to navigate through weeds and hold my nose to finally come to the Sonoran Corridor issue. And um, uh, But other than that, it was, to me, and many polling uh, entities uh, agreed and, and saw this, that the bond issues and the, and the bonding package, the whole program was pretty much doomed before it even was started because uh, there was so much mistrust in, in county government that uh, when we're talking about 800 million plus being given over to the county uh, government and the administration, there was a lot of obviously angst and what are they going to do with that money, and is it going to be actually spent on what those bonds are, are for? Um, I think we're bonded out. I think we have uh, a, 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 a desire as well as a duty to find other ways to uh, promote uh, what we should be doing in our core services throughout the county. And if everything was, was rosy and everything was great and, and things were moving along steadily, uh, maybe that would be a, a, a point where we could look at some bonding of some sort, but uh, those times aren't here. We're in a very uh, a suppressed economic t uh, development. They talk about a recovery. We don't see a recovery. I, I don't see a recovery. The people I talk to uh, in backyards and in living rooms, they don't see a recovery. So when you have a bad economic uh, uh, environment to begin with, why go out and spend more money 
and put more stress on an already bad situation. So um, as far as, as more bonding, as far as uh, going back to the voters to ask for more projects for bonding, uh, I, I would not be in favor of that. And I don't think the, the voters of uh, Pima County would, would accept that either. Well, I'm glad you asked that because I can give a plug. I was a spokesman for the no against bonds. So that gives you your answer if I supported the bonds or not. $816 million tab, $1.4 billion in debt is what our county is in right now. We have more debt than all other counties in Arizona combined. This bond would have brought an additional $1 billion in debt, would have raised our primary property tax a third time for 2015, and we had absolutely no way to pay for the operation and maintenance of any of those projects. No one on the Board of Supervisors ever came up with a method of how to pay for the O&M for those projects. So I am, I am against bonding, I'm not in theory, you know, as a strategic, but uh, right now our county cannot afford the debt, we cannot afford the additional taxes, and I'm not about to lay those taxes on, on, on the taxpayer, because I'm listening and they're saying no. And John? Uh, much the same as my opponents on this issue, we're, we're taxed out. The, the citizens don't trust the government as it stands now to, to use the money wisely, so they're not gonna wanna give us any more. We have to go out and earn their trust again by making wise decisions with the money. The way I'm looking at some of the, the bonding issues that came up is uh, that an average citizen can probably relate to is you, you can't go to uh, as an individual to a payday loan vendor and dig yourself out of a hole because you didn't have the money that you needed to begin with. If you're borrowing it and then adding interest on top of it, you're digging yourself into a deeper hole mm -hmm. and the madness needs to stop. We've got just a couple minutes left, so I'm going to ask a question that I hope for short answers from all of you. Uh, so this one will be about road funding, which has been a constant um, issue in Pima County. So strategically, your approach to road funding, would you uh, support a plan that would just have countywide road funding fix the worst roads first, or would you support money for each district in Pima County so that each district can address its own needs? And we'll start with you. Well, I have come up with my own road plan. It's on my website. If you go to my website, uh, I won't give a plug. We're short on time. <laughs> and uh, look up issues. It's, it's there. Strategically, just real quick, um, we need to fix our county's economic problems first, take the wasted money, put it towards the road, and then look at other things such as revising our HERF funding formula, taking our HERF monies and actually putting it into more of it into roads and transportation problems instead of um, paying off bonds and instead of uh, other items that are under there. And I'm going to cut you short because we are short on time. That okay. sounds like a district, a countywide approach, correct? To yes. the budget. Okay. John. Okay. Really quickly, uh, Allie Miller has produced a, a road plan that's a framework that she openly says it's the beginning point, you know, wants uh, stakeholders to chime in on. And that covers uh, fixing the roads countywide inside the municipalities also. So taking care of all of it. As a five-year member of the Regional Transportation Authority and one who helped actually form it, and as a, fi as a, as a chair of the Regional Transportation Authority, I, I have to make sure that this is done very carefully and with a lot of de deliberation because there's a lot of moving parts to it. The RTA is involved. We have jurisdictions involved. We have all, the various entities that are involved, and it's something that the RTA formed, which was the most uh, effective model for addressing our road and infrastructure needs and we need to replicate that same model and bring all of the jurisdiction into the into the table into the room into the discussion and the only way that this is going to be solved is if everybody has a seat at that table and everybody has a piece of the pie that needs to be developed through a, an RTA model whoever wins the district 4 republican primary faces green party candidate Josh Riley in the November general election there's also a republican primary race in district 1 District 1 is on the northwest side of Pima County. It runs from River Road to the northern county boundary, roughly tracking I-10 west of the Catalina Mountains. Incumbent Allie Miller seeks a second term on the board. She has long argued that road work is one of the biggest issues in the county, and she wants to put an additional $130 million a year for the next five years into regional road work. She also wants to extend the life of the Regional Transportation Authority which is a sales tax funded plan for roads. Miller would dedicate half of the money it brings in to road work. Miller also wants to cut what she calls wasteful spending, lower taxes, and encourage economic development. 
John Winchester is running against her in the primary. He is an outreach coordinator with the Arizona Center for Judaic Studies and is the state director of Christians United for Israel. He also prioritizes roads and wants lower taxes to encourage more small businesses. We invited Supervisor Miller and Mr. Winchester for a joint interview. Miller said she was unavailable. Last week, I sat down with Mr. Winchester. You're running in the Republican primary against an incumbent, so tell your party voters why you're a better choice. I think that we're lacking severe leadership, particularly in District 1 where I'm running. Uh, everybody knows what the problems are, but we have had no solutions and they haven't been addressed. And uh, my particular, um, in my particular race, the incumbent has been in office for three and a half years and has not proposed one piece of policy at all. How can you fix if you're not proposing solutions? And I want to get, I want to tackle um, the problems in the, in the region and provide solutions innovatively. I think she would disagree saying that she has proposed some solutions in terms of road funding um, and a few plans like that. So tell me something specific that you would do differently from her, say a vote you would have taken differently. Um, I would have taken a different tack on the, her views on economic development and county uh, participation in it. She voted recently for Caterpillar, but much of the economic development pieces, the Raytheon Road, uh, Worldview, we don't know yet if it's legal, aspects of it were legal, but I think the attempt is, is correct. I think the county should be addressing with the private sector economic development. Um, she is not, she doesn't agree with that at all. And I think the county should have a, take an active hand in economic development working with the private sector. In your view, where does economic development rank um, in the list of priority issues? Is it your top issue? Got to be the top issue. We have a uh, deficit of infrastructure. Roads are terrible. Uh, tax structure's bad. But a lot of that is due to low wages here. Families need to be able to get higher wages to put more into the county, in the government coffers, so that they can um, lower taxes, so that they can fix roads and infrastructure. It's a, it's a sick, circular problem. Um, here in the county, so definitely economic development. One of the things that the current county board and um, administrator say when we get on the topic of roads and road repair is that the county decisions are hampered by state decisions in terms of road funding. So how would you uh, put more money into road work given that what some of what road money we get in Pima County is based on state decisions for funding? Right, so for our Department of Transportation there are a lot of pro strings on that purse that we don't have control over mm -hmm. and we're going to have to solve the problem ourselves. We have uh, a infrastructure that is aged but it cannot service the population size that we have that we have, and it has to be brought up. There's a 350 million dollar deficit on that um, and we're going to have to produce capital to fix it and it's not in the general fund. So we're going to have to, um, I think that we need to um, give the RTA more resources, whether it's an extension, I think waiting for their uh, contract to end in uh, 2026 is not a good idea. I think we need to do it sooner, giving them more revenue um, at hand right away to go cash on hand and, and start fixing things. So that would be a regional approach and all of the en government en entities in the region would benefit from that approach. Um, yeah. That's what you're saying, correct? Absolutely. It has built confidence um, it, uh, with voters. The RTA has, has done a great job, I think. It's uh, a collaborative, so I think it builds confidence in the voters, and they've done a good job of getting things done um, and fixing the roads and the projects that they do have. So I think, I think it's absolutely the way to go. And, and, and by renewing their contract early and giving them additional resources, it, it can r raise uh, between $500 million and, and a $1 billion in revenue to fix the roads both in incorporated and unincorporated areas. Continuing on the topic of budget and state funding, uh, another issue of the last few years has been the state passing some costs along to, in some cases, many counties, and in yeah. some cases, Pima County. So how would you propose to deal with that? The county can only lobby, but the state has been balancing its budget by sending their costs to the counties and municipalities. There's, the county can't stop it. We can only lobby for the state to act more equitable. Um, but the county is getting tens of million dollars in extra uh, funding that they have to find um, in the general fund, and the only way to pay for that is by raising taxes, because if we don't have the cash on hand to do it, and it's, it's, it's a chunk of money every year, and I think it's irresponsible at the legislative level. 
Um, but really the county's you know, hamstrung. They can't do more than just try to influence that decision at the, at the, uh, count, at the state level. Continue lobbying is your answer. Yeah. The winner of the Republican primary race in District 1 will face Democrat Brian Bickle in the November general election. Now, I've asked Dylan Smith of the Tucson Sentinel to join me to analyze these races. And Dylan, I want to start by just um, explaining or clarifying something earlier in the show. We asked Supervisor Miller um, to come in on a specific date to, to meet John Winchester for the interview. She declined that date. We offered two more, and then we did not hear back from her. So um, her opponent also says she has not been appearing at public events with him. They're not going to the same ones. Um, do you know why? Um, well, I, I think these are two candidates who probably disagree on a lot of things and don't get along very well. So putting him in the same room might be interesting for us as, as journalists and probably a little bit interesting for voters to uh, get a sense of that contrast. But uh, I, I think, in, at, at least coming from Allie Miller's side, you know, being the incumbent, she doesn't want to give a whole lot of credence to somebody who's trying to challenge her in the primary. They have been both out uh, you know, hitting the campaign trails, going and speaking with uh, various uh, rec Republican groups uh, especially. Now, as far as I know, I'm not the only person in the media that she also isn't speaking to. She's never come in for an interview, though I have invited her several times. Um, does she talk to other media, in, to your knowledge? Well, here and there, she's spoken to us a, a little bit, and uh, especially as this uh, uh, case that we've been investigating involving the uh, sham news website, the Arizona Daily Herald, which was uh, set up by one of her former staffers while he was working for her, and all of the public records issues. She has responded to us at times, at other times, uh, really just completely ignored our request to try and get some comments from her uh, about what we had been learning for the last several months. So as you said, you are looking into whether there's been, uh, you've, you've requested some public records from her office um, and you haven't gotten them. What's the update on that? Well, we have gotten some and uh, early on, we, uh, you know, well, not very early on, about a month after we requested the records in May, we got a batch of uh, her emails, which were sent uh, from her county email account and some from her staffers. Those were uh, really marked up, redacted, blacked out. The Board of Supervisors voted to turn over all of the emails in their unredacted form so we could really get a better idea of what was going on. What she has yet to turn over and has actually denied exists, even though we know that she uses her personal email to do county business. She says she doesn't. She says that those emails don't exist and she has not turned those over. And because of that, and uh, especially because of some uh, emails from earlier in her term that came out last week that were uh, provided to us, the, now the state attorney general is looking into how she handles public records and the activities in her office. Now, Supervisor Miller is obviously the incumbent, um, and we're talking about her, and she's in the news because of supervisor meetings. How much of a burden does her opponent, John Winchester, have to get some equal name recognition in the race? Well, I think especially amongst the Republican base who turn out in a primary, and that's going to be, you know, I, I really, I think where this election is going to be decided because it's such a Republican district. It is going to be the Republican primary that determines who will most likely end up in office after November. You know, it, it, he, John Winchester really needs to try and build his name ID, and he is new to politics. It's not something he's been, you know, uh, deeply involved in uh, previously. But I, I think he's been doing a, a pretty good job of uh, getting out there and speaking with people and trying to... Uh, develop a, a bit of a contrast between how he approaches things and how Allie Miller approaches things. Moving on to District 4, what's your take on that race? Who, who is a Ray Carroll voter going to pick in this primary? Well, and that is a very good question because Ray Carroll was such a popular supervisor in that district and for 20 years didn't have a Democratic opponent because he was, you know, the Democrats realized that we, they shouldn't even bother running somebody against him. And Ray Carroll has uh, endorsed uh, Steve Christie and says that uh, he's the, the person to uh, follow in his footsteps. Christie, you know, uh, says, definitely tries to take a step back from saying that he's a Ray Carroll clone, and I, I don't think he is. He has, uh, you know, different takes on, on the issues, I think, uh, especially when it comes to some business issues. He is a little bit more conservative than Ray Carroll was. So you can't say that he's a complete analog of him, but he's more like Carroll than the other two candidates who are running in the primary. All right, thanks so much for your time. That's it for us. To watch again or share our interviews with the candidates, go to our website. Next week, we'll hear from Republicans running for Pima County Sheriff 
and Democrats running for county attorney. Thanks for watching.